Welcome everybody to Funeral Nation episode 112. I'm Ryan Thogmartin. That is Jeff, the Funeral Commander Harbison. Jeff, we were together last week in Jacksonville. You were back in the office this week. I was in Indiana and I'm back in the office this afternoon. Crazy, crazy, crazy travel for both of us. Uh, so it's good to be stationary for a few minutes. You know, it is. It's nice to be back here in paradise. Not that Florida was uh, not paradise at all. And uh, this is that time of year, speaking engagements, trade shows. This is the first full week I've been in the office since the middle of March. And so uh, everybody wants us. We're in demand, right? That's all right. It's, it's high demand. And, uh, you know, in Indiana this week, everybody's like, where's the commander? Where's the is commander coming? So, you know, you're inspiring a lot of people to smoke. Uh, cigars, which is well, that's a good thing. I want to be a leader amongst my peers in particular areas out here, so uh, I'm glad I'll be there at some point, y'all. Otherwise, you can come out here to sunny Phoenix where it's really nice right now. There you go. Hey, Ryan, uh, we're powered by the CNJ folks, and uh, right now we're making sure and heard that Jamie's going to see things clearer later on. We'll talk about that at another point. But anyway, uh, let's talk about CNJ, run their promotion. And guys, if your funeral's not paid for, it's not over with yet. What payment method do you prefer families use for your goods and services? Most funeral homes and cemeteries prefer cash check or credit card over life insurance as the preferred method of payment. However, families who use life insurance are able to purchase the funeral service of their choice and spend 31% more on your goods and services. By encouraging more families to pay with insurance, you can create a better experience for the family and become more profitable without increasing your call volume. The reason most firms prefer cash check or credit card over life insurance is that insurance companies are a hassle to deal with and payment can often take weeks or months to receive. With CNJ Financial, you can receive funding within 24 hours of verification of benefit, thereby eliminating the hassle, headache, and cash flow delay in processing insurance death claims. Let us show you why hundreds of funeral homes all across America choose CNJ for their assignment funding needs, and why many associations, accounting firms, and industry leaders recommend CNJ to their clients and members. That's it. Well, Jeff. Thanks to uh, Jamie for uh, sponsoring the show. Uh, he's, he's amazing, and, and, and you deal with the cash flow side of the business quite a bit and see the positives of, of what they're doing. So uh, you and I were together last week in Jacksonville, Florida, with uh, a, a group of, I think there were about 20 other companies or represented uh, there, and Live Oak Bank put on the event and it was a roundtable discussion where we're really trying to drive some change in the funeral profession, but got a lot of great minds together. Uh, I think it was extremely powerful, uh, and it's a great foundation for us to build upon. Like, kind of, what was your take? You want to recap? I agree. Um, you know, having the folks there again, Tim Bridgers and his team uh, from Live Oak Bank hosted this, and the important part was uh, this is a supplier vendor side of the business and we have uh, the idea that we can affect change and change for the positive and rather than talking about it I think this is going to be something where we're going to go and execute and we're going to pick a couple things uh, you'll see a lot more coming out of it soon but the uh, people at the table have the ability to make decisions and again to make things happen so I think it was great. It was wonderful for us to be there together. Uh, I think on show 111, we were able to interview from some folks up there. And uh, I am certain that we'll see something come out of this group that will be noticeable within the next 18 months. Um, there's some other big news with NFDA. You want to share that with us, Ryan? Yeah. So NFDA has uh, rolled out a health care program, which is you know, you and I are both small business owners and, and healthcare is a major issue with small businesses in the U.S. and that affects funeral homes and the uh, employee benefits and things that they can provide. So I think it's great that NFDA is, is rolling out a healthcare program that will make it, you know, easier for small businesses in, in the profession to be able to offer healthcare and extend that benefit to employees. Agreed. Um, I think that's something certainly it's a big deal. I mean, if you have employees, 
you have to pay for that uh, or at least make it available for them now. Laws have changed and healthcare is a big deal. So uh, kudos for NFDA making a move in that direction. Ryan, this is, uh, speaking of Live Oak Bank a few minutes ago, they're one of our sponsors. They're bringing this news to us. So uh, let's hear a little more about them. Live Oak Bank provides finance expertise that inspires funeral home and cemetery owners to grow their business and preserve their legacy. Their funeral home and cemetery lending team understands the profession from top to bottom. They know what business owners like you need to succeed, so they specialize in providing custom financial solutions accompanied by personal service. They're focused on helping you achieve your goals no matter the challenges. All right, Commander, who do we have in our interview segment today? You know, I'm excited today. Uh, the young lady was on the cover of Inc. Magazine. Um, she's one of the bright 30 under 30 new entrepreneurs in our country. I think we should be really proud of her because she is a death care entrepreneur. Interesting. Interesting. A new entry. Um, let's roll the interview with Adele Archer. Adele, welcome to the Funeral Nation show. We're glad to have you here. Great to be here, guys. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And ma'am, because it's a Southern thing and you're down in Texas, so you know what I mean? You can be eight or 83. You're going to be a ma'am. So uh, that's just the way it is. Please introduce yourself and share your professional background. Yeah. Um, so my name is Adele Archer. I'm one of the co-founders of a company in Austin called Eternipa. Um, we grow real diamonds from the ashes of a loved one or pet. Um, professional background, I came to Austin about five years ago um, to get my MBA in entrepreneurship. Um, and then I'd been working in tech um, up till uh, a couple years ago. Um, so, you know, have a strong background in tech and uh, launching new products to market. Um, and then did a pivot into the fabulous space that we're all in. Interesting. Uh, just a comment about tech. You're probably amazed at what we're doing here with all of our high, high technology of recording this show, right? <laughs> we figured it out. It's, it's, it it is it. top notch. <laughs> well, Adele, we featured uh, your Inc. Magazine article uh, on connecting directors and you being on the cover of that magazine, uh, which is pretty awesome. Can you explain what that was all about? Yeah, thank you. Um, well, it was uh, it, it was definitely an exciting surprise for us as well. Um, you know, we you do apply to the thirty under thirty program, um, and then they go through a process of um, further curating the uh, candidates, and then they actually even have founders of pretty well known companies. Like I know the founder of Evernote was on the final um, panel, and then they judge the different companies and get it all the way down to the thirty that they're going to feature on the list. So we were really fortunate to make it all the way through all of those rounds and then even get tapped to be on the cover of it. Um, and I, I just think it's, it's a really cool, exciting acknowledgement because it's the first time I really see mainstream media taking an idea like this that is new and different and just really talking about it in, in such a positive light and not with that caveat of, you know, oh, well, while everyone thinks it's weird, here's these people doing this thing. They were really celebratory of it, which is great. Yeah, that's interesting because welcome to everybody thinks it's weird as an industry. Just yeah. <laughs> read your article and you made some mention uh, of that where um, you're going to take some different routes. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, first of all, if you'll explain a little bit more about the company and that you started this with a, uh, a personal story. So if you'll share those two with us, that'd be awesome. Yeah, sure. Um, so, I mean, probably like a lot of us in this space, I didn't really foresee myself being in the death care industry, um, you know, four or five years ago. But um, so I was originally looking at getting into the lab-grown diamond industry. Uh, that's a really up-and-coming market as consumers wanting lab-grown. Um, and so we were going to partner with a lab and serve as their consumer side of their business and help build up that brand and, um, you know, and, and bring it to consumers. And right around that time, I had a really, really close friend and mentor of mine. Um, we met every single week and, you know, I'd go as far as to say she was the second mom to me. Um, she passed from pancreatic cancer. And so I received her ashes and I was looking for something to do with them. And 
you know, no offense uh, for funeral directors, but I wasn't a big fan of an urn. I didn't want, you know, her just sitting in an urn in my mantle. And, um, you know, I, I was not super impressed with everything else that was out there. It just felt a little, you know, trinkety and just not significant enough for somebody as special as she was to me. Um, she was really one of those few remarkable people in your life and you just want something extra for them. So over dinner with these lab grown um, diamond scientists, we started chatting about how you actually can extract carbon from ashes and grow a diamond from it. And I knew right there, like, that's exactly what I wanted to do for Tracy. And, you know, I wondered if other people would want this. And so, um, you know, we started to kind of test that and, and ultimately we did completely pivot into uh, into doing this instead because I think it's there's a real need for it and a lot of people want um, more memorial options and especially when you lose somebody really remarkable you want something you know of this level. Fantastic, True. very personal. So I mean, how are you planning on penetrating the the funeral service market? Yeah, so to date we mostly have been working with our customers directly. Um, but, you know, we are absolutely um, excited about working with the funeral space. Um, it's just about finding, you know, like-minded businesses that, that we collaborate with. A huge piece of what we do, um, you know, and, and really coming from a very, um, you know, a customer-focused place is that not only are we growing a really phenomenal diamond, but we're also taking our customers on a really amazing journey. So over the time that we're together, which is months and months, we're sending them pictures and updates and videos. And our goal is to bring some brightness to a dark time and to hopefully even change their relationship a bit to grief. And so, um, you know, when it comes to finding funeral homes that uh, are aligned in that mentality and, and want to work with us, I think that's where it's going to be a really wonderful fit. So, um, you know, any funeral home that is kind of curious about it, I welcome you to, to test it out and, and refer us a customer and see how different our experience is. Interesting. Uh, Ryan, we watched Gary pronounce his na last name from him. I'm from the South. It doesn't work. Vaynerchuk? Yeah. There you go, Vaynerchuk. I, I was close, but I, I would have had Woodchuck or something that was in my head. But the point being, he had a show not long ago about the funeral business and made that very reference is that uh, you should and need to penetrate this business. But if uh, if you don't see fit, keep that direction, you know, with the consumers out here. And I know that's not going to be a popular item, but um, that's the way it is, you know, and I think that you're certainly having success because again, you wouldn't be on the cover of Inc. Magazine. We haven't made it yet. And we've been on lots of them, you know, right. <laughs> we've been on Rolling Stone and some of the others, but not that. Right. <laughs> so uh, this is a fun part of our show. When we come up, we have no idea what you're going to say. Uh, we've heard some interesting things. And if you say something interesting enough, it will make the clip at the end of the year. So we yeah. want to get to know a little bit about just the lightning round. And uh, so you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. So what's your dream job? I mean, obviously what I'm doing. But I would also, uh, I, I could add to that. Um, it would be really cool to be the person that gets to grant all the make-a-wish dreams, you know, for little kids. That would be pretty cool. That's pretty cool there. Uh, how about the best vacation spot? I would say uh, driving around French wine country and wine tasting for weeks. There you go. I would have to be driven around. Guatemala. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, here we go. What's your favorite meal? Favorite meal, uh, probably tortilla soup or huevos rancheros in the morning. Wow. Listen to you down there in Texas. Oh, yeah. hey. um, and so here's the big one, celebrity crush. And, and Ryan and I are not allowed to participate as those guys. So tell me. Understandable. Okay. Thank you. It's made yeah. it less complicated. Uh, it's um, very uncomfortable. Hmm. I might have to go with George Clooney because I re I respect that he's maintained kind of the silver fox, and and as he gets older, he just gets better. <laughs> I love it. One for the other. All right. Um, so, one word to describe your experience in the funeral industry so far. Welcoming. Awesome. That's great to hear. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, we appreciate you coming on and uh, visiting with us. You're on a, a, a rising star. You're a diamond in the business. 
Thank you. Way. <laughs> to a meeting in person. Are you going to participate in uh, in FDA this year? Not this year, but probably in years to come. Okay, good. Well, we look forward to it, and thank you for uh, visiting with us. And uh, we'll make sure your information is up on the site for folks to contact you. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. Yep. Thank yeah. you. Take care. Now, uh, Jeff, it's really exciting what uh, Adele is doing, and you know, I think probably the coolest thing about this is the fact that a death care company was featured on the cover of Inc. Magazine and a young entrepreneur that is is making waves and, and doing things. You know, it's you and I talked a little bit last week about uh, kind of some of the change that's happening in the funeral space and how a lot of companies are creating products that funeral homes want and not listening to what the consumer wants in this profession. And, you know, this is a, this is a, a turn for the better where, you know, Adele has tapped into a consumer market where she's creating product first for the consumer. And if the funeral home wants to come alongside of her and help out and help promote it, awesome. If not, you know, she's going to make a go of it and be able to go direct consumer because there's a demand for it. Exactly. In other words, uh, you can keep your fences built and you only have to play in your own backyard or you can lower them down a little bit, allow other people to come in and benefit from it. But what do I know out here? I'm Speaking just... of what I, what I know, uh, who sponsored this segment? This segment was brought to us by our good friends at Sitch Casket. So let's roll that promo. Funeral Nation is sponsored by Sitch Casket. Sitch has changed everything for funeral homes facing declining profits from cremation with casket quality equal to the top domestic brands, but half the cost or better. Sitch, only your accountant can tell the difference. Cool, good stuff. All right, Commander, this is where we have a little bit of fun. Our W2F segment, make you say what the funeral, and uh, I don't know where you got this picture. Did you snap this yourself, or was this uh, you trolling the internet? Well, I have to tell you that uh, last Saturday night, I went to a rum fest in downtown Phoenix, and I very well could have been rolled in the back of it on the way home. Uh, I, anyway, I'll leave that alone. Shout out to my buddy Johnny, who made it, Johnny Rotten, that is his nickname, got me home. So it was all good in an Uber. Uh, I think this is a hilarious. It's your last ride. And uh, could this be something, a new business model where Uber is going to do removals? Man, can you imagine? I like we we briefly, like jokingly, had a, had a roundabout conversation about this last week. But I mean, could it be that Uber could be the new livery service? I mean, they have the the Uber Black SUV where you're getting a private car. You know, it could be as easy as the the funeral home calling Uber and getting a body picked up and doing a removal. Or what if the family hired the Uber to do the removal? Ooh, wait a minute now. Now we're starting to get into really Ooh. tough territory because you remember those travel agents? You used to have to go get your ticket there yeah. and all that. Anyway. So, uh -oh. Man, we're just taking everybody off today. I love it. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to get a complaint. You don't love the industry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. All right. So, Ryan, uh, we've got 113 coming up next week. Are you traveling next week? Sure am. To, to well, I don't travel far. Next week is the Ohio Funeral Director Convention, and uh, I'll be there. The following week, I'll be in Kentucky, and the week after that, I will be speaking in Wisconsin. So, wow. the next three yeah. weeks on the road. I'm with you. Um, I've got one. I'm going up to see the folks up in Maine not too long ago. Ooh. So. Uh, yeah, I've got to pay somebody to be an interpreter, so I'll spend some time in Boston and Maine uh, with our folks. Anyway, Ryan, thanks for another great show. Folks, uh, whether you like us or not, we want to hear from you. you got a comment, send it. But bottom line is, if you want to see change affected, we're the change makers here making it happen. Look forward to hearing from you. You got it. All right. Until next time, have a great effing week. Out here. <laughs>